Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. May peace be upon all of you. Welcome back to my channel. I'm literally so, so excited to be on here and making videos where I'm actually speaking to you guys like this. Um, it's been quite the journey over these past few weeks. Um, you know, it's been spring break and a lot of work has been happening. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm like overly exhausted. But you know, the experiences that I've had during my first spring break, well, not my first spring break, but like my first time actually doing something for spring break um just passed and that was exciting and thank you to everyone who watched um my videos and actually commented yes i love you um literally because most of them are my friends <laughs> um so yes thank you for that um if you haven't already watched these videos by all means watch them now you know they're my first two vlogs and i'm very excited um and you know uh a lot of other things have been happening. Like they, we had elections at my school and I was actually running for SGA president. And fortunately, thanks to my lovely people and lovely supporters, once again, I made it. And so now I'm the new SGA president. I don't know if I should really be happy about this because right when I got it, I was like, shiz, man, what did I get myself into? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what did I sign myself up for? Because, like, honestly, I'm already getting emails and it's getting hectic. But anyways, uh, that's enough of an update for now. So I believe in my last video where I was actually speaking and telling you guys something a bit personal about myself, I said that um, uh, I would start making videos, like a video series, where I would talk about, you know, pressing issues within my own community that I feel like should be spoken about. Now, I hope it doesn't resonate with you, but if it does, I hope you kind of listen to it and, you know, pay more attention to it and actually do something about it. I don't so like we're going to start off with something simple. Um, well, simple, but I, I feel like it's very complicated um, within um, my community. So it's this idea of kind of um, expressing your love um, to your loved ones verbally and actually being able to show them that you care about them in a way that they're going to like you know to, in, the, in the way that they're going to actually see it and feel it and it's something that i feel like that what does not happen as much as it should you know um i feel like people really do need emotional support especially living in america where like you know a lot of um our ways of life are different in the sense that we see our American friends uh, and their moms and their parents in general and siblings always showing support to each other um, and saying things like I love you and like hugging um, their uh, loved ones and things like that. All of that gets put into our head and I feel like subconsciously we all start needing that love in a different way. Whereas if you we were back home and we didn't really see things like that happening, we just take it as it is, right? Um, but I feel like living in America, we kind of have to adjust to that and, you know, I feel like you know just just as muslims in general you know being able to show someone that you care about them and being able to say certain things that will make someone feel good about themselves and about who they are especially if they're your family member like it's something that i struggled with early on with um with my parents and and my family in general you know because we didn't used to say things like i love you all the time like it wasn't a part of our way of life but eventually we, um, I, I, I started like kind of changing that in my own way because I'm the kind of person where if I see something and I feel like it benefits, um, if it benefits people and I feel like it will benefit me, um, I, I will start using it, right? So I know some things don't need to be expressed, um, by word, but trust me, it really does impact the person. I know it really impacts me emotionally. And, um, whenever my, um, fellow like, you know, African friends hear my dad say that to me or me say that to my parents, they get surprised and I'm like it's, it shouldn't be something that we are surprised of it should be something that we um we adapt to it it's like, it should be something that we do on a normal basis you know because parents I mean because kids and parents I feel like need the support like we do have to also show special care to our boys specifically because normally I mean I I heard about this study when I was in class this one time where one of my, where my professor was actually uh, making the point that uh, researchers have found that girls are given more emotional support than boys in the sense that like they did this study where uh, they took a bunch of toddlers or however the case being um, it, the, the case involved toddlers and in that research they saw that when um, when, when girls are to cry um, or make a fuss or something that they'd be more likely that, that the caregiver would more likely take them and actually embrace them and hug them and show them like you know um, actual physical love and care verbally where 
whereas if the boy were to uh, make a fuss and cry and do something, they would just be handed like a toy. Like they'd be given something physically to play with and that'd just be it. Like it shouldn't be like that. It should be like that. Well, well it, you know, the second part, it shouldn't be like that. We should take both and we should learn to embrace both and actually give them the love that they need. Um, this is something that I truly believe in and I feel like it will really benefit a lot of people that I know. Um, and I know that I'm grateful for my parents for actually being able to embrace me. But I do see if I were to choose, I feel like girls are given a lot more emotional support than guys. So that's one thing that I would have to say. So another issue all right now this is a norm that i feel like a lot of you if you know me you definitely know what i'm about to say uh because this is something that i talk about all the time and i'm passionate about it and i feel like it's something that should not happen okay and this way of thinking is definitely backwards and it's it's, it's dumb okay so when it comes to cooking okay Cooking is a life necessity, okay? Without food, a person cannot survive. We all need food. Either we cook it ourselves, which is the most healthiest way, or we buy food. Now, Fulani households have this way of thinking. Um, usually, it's always the girl in the household, the woman, who is, you know, kind of forced in a way to learn how to cook. And right after they ask her to cook or say she has to cook, they um, usually attach the whole husband part of it. They're like, you have to know how to cook for your husband, this and this and that. And I'm just here like, okay, number one, yes, it's, it's a very nice thing to know how to cook for your husband, but it's also a very nice thing to know how to cook for yourself, all right? So I hate that they always have to attach the husband part to it because it's like, um, we, we don't, you don't even need to have to say that. Like, and they tell this to like freaking like what? 13 year olds and 12 year olds who are, who are just growing up like they don't even need to be exposed to that right now. Just tell them they, you're trying to teach them how to cook and it's a life skill. Like that's all you have to really do. Uh, they leave the boys out in the family and they only make the girl cook whilst both of them in America especially are going are both going to school and are both being um, active in extracurricular activities and they're both doing so much yet when the girl comes home she's usually the one that's you know doing both her homework and is in that kitchen cooking and it's like cooking is definitely one of the things that we should be teaching both guys and girls. My friends and I have been talking about this for so long. Um, it's been like literally months that we've been speaking about this topic of cooking. Um, and I have some friends who actually even go to the extent of saying that in a household, only a woman should be in the kitchen. That only a woman should cook in, in our household and the, the guy should not do anything. And I'm just like, okay, um, I respect your idea and, and, and I respect the fact that, and I, and I respect the fact that you think this way because I, most of that thinking stems from how they are raised. And I can't take that from anyone because, we, you know, we all come from a background where like, we're thought that only um, a woman is supposed to be cooking and this and that. And so that's how we grew up. When we grew up in that culture, you kind of adapt to that and that's okay. I'm just saying that we have to step out of that and be the generation that actually you know, teaches both our kids, both women and um, girls, how to how to cook, um, and that's just how I feel about this. You know, the reason why some feel like their husband should not be in that kitchen and helping them with the cooking is because essentially he's the one that that's responsible for the bills, this, that, and the third, right? And yes, I, I, if you are living in a household and you guys, you know, before getting married, you have agreed on that and you're like, that's how you want to live your life in the sense that he pays um, for the bills and you handle all the household works and things like that. And that's okay with me, um, but I just think that we also have to consider that you know I feel like living in America being that we're both going to school and we're both like you know we're, we're both out here hustling to eventually make money because there's one thing that I know that Africans go to school for for specifically is to be able to make money and bring something back home right so we should also be helping 
and these financial aspects of things. You know, we should also be helping in the household and be helping in um in actually paying these bills because I do feel like males are also put under pressure a lot and you know knowing how to make make ends meet for the whole entire family really quickly be able to be like a money making machine or some sort and that's the reason why a lot of people actually don't get married when they want to and I feel like that's something that we kind of have to lessen a little because you know we're both out there struggling you know and we're both out there trying to make money so what's you know what, what's really stopping you from sharing what you're making with the love of your life you know what's really stopping you from doing that like yes I understand that Islam um, says that only I understand that Islam says that you don't really have to share your money with your husband as um, a wife and that you can keep it all to yourself but damn man like if you're making money like why not share it with your husband you guys are literally one at this point you know um, so that's something that people should really consider and I feel like people should act on uh, this one I guess would would be a stretch but I think it's very important to talk about so I feel like uh, Fulani men specifically, sorry to call you out, but I feel like Fulani men in general have this idea that only uh, females are supposed to be virgins before marriage. There, I said it, right? I don't, I don't care how it comes out. So, this applies to the both of us, and you cannot be a side eyeing woman and actually be looking down on them when they do the act when you're there and you know what you did, okay? Um, it doesn't work like that. Uh, it, the, the rules apply to both and we have to start complying to that. Now I know our generation is very different and a lot of things that we do that we shouldn't do um, and I'm not here to judge anyone I'm just here to make sure that we both know what is there and um, what has to go down okay no, no one really knows who's been sexually active or not unless you're just that nosy and you're actually all about the gossip um, which if you are then you should definitely not do um you know no one really knows who's sexually active but there's this thing where like uh if a girl in, in Fulani like in Fulani in Guinea um and I think it's called would it a futu or something where once they are married they think it's okay to check the bed sheet to see if the girl bled or something first of all I don't know anywhere in Islam and Islamic books that that is written that that has to happen that's literally invasion of privacy there should be no reason why you're looking at um, a couple sheet after they do their business like there is no need for that like what the hell like how do people even like that, that's like that's weird okay that's that's weird and it's wrong and it should not happen okay so it's so easy for them to find out if the girl is or is not um and by the way actually it shouldn't be that easy but they just consider that if you bleed if you bleed then you're a virgin but they don't understand that you know th that some girls actually don't bleed and they still could be virgins but either way you shouldn't do that and if you're a guy and you see this happening you should be on the forefront of all of this and be able to stand up for your woman and say that you know that should happen okay um you you because you you guys do have privilege you know sometimes I'm like I wish I were you know a Fulani man or something um but I definitely don't but you do you guys do have privilege and you should be standing up and doing something about that privilege okay so if you're a girl and you're about to get married and you feel like your parents are actually going to make you go through this or anything of that sort um, because of culture or whatever the case being, uh, then definitely um, if you want, you can reach out to me and I can try and find you the help that you need and some people that could advise your parents better or I can just like, you know, help you find a way to tell your parents because it's something that like I really don't think should be happening. I'm not saying I'm like you know, an expert on this and I'll be able to give you um, the advice that you need. But if I'm not able to, I will try and find someone who can. So definitely um, message me on my Instagram and I'll be sure to like get back to you because I really do feel for y'all. Like I heard the story where this one person she was actually forced to give them the white sheet and they actually had the audacity to take that white sheet with blood on it and bring it back home to celebrate with the family back home. Like who? They're literally carrying blood <laughs> biohazards across <laughs> nations. Like, oh my God, subhanAllah. It literally, it, it makes my skin crawl, okay? That's not cool. Now I do have other 
norms to talk about and things that I wish we can step away from. So inshallah, I'll try to make another video about that. Hopefully it's not as long as this one. Um, so if you have any thoughts on what that may be or what you want that to be, then by all means, put it below and be sure to, you know, be a part of the notification family and let's just keep things rolling. Alrighty. Ma salama. Mm -hmm.